At Quahog Honda and Subarus, we got Hondas and Subarus. Hey, young world, it's Max, the representative of Team Personal Record, standing here with Marvel. All right, today we're going to be uh, reviewing Jumanji The Next Level. Yeah, there um, we go. There we go. Jumanji The Next Level is starting off from about two years two years um i think it's in their sophomore year of college after the uh the first jumanji and basically what's going on is uh the main character the protagonist he feels that uh he's not really the character his jumanji avatar was he needs like he feels like a loser a beta in real life so he wants the feel of being a hero like how the rock the superhuman avatar he was you know using in the game was so uh, he goes back to the game, he tries to feel that way, but this time the game's kind of busted up, so they gave him an avatar, they, you know, randomize it, and they end up giving him an avatar who's basically just like his character in the game. Yeah, she was kind of small, meek, and timid, and, and you know, so this time his, his avatar had a, uh, she was a thief, and it was a female. Yeah. So, you know, she was more sneaky and stealthy and, you know, kind of small and stuff. So I, I guess that kind of mirrored his, his real life persona. Basically, his old friends had, and his grandfather and his grandfather's um, business partner had found out that he was stuck in the game and they end up accidentally getting themselves stuck. In, well, not accidentally, they actually went there intentionally to save him. But uh, they had uh, got their avatars you know it was randomized and everybody was all disappointed but they went on with the adventure uh i personally thought the store was pretty cool uh, he saw you didn't see the first one did you no 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 that and uh, i think that kind of hindered me but also gave me a fresh perspective on the movie that i didn't see the first one um so i, I wasn't used to why the uh the characters were upset at their current avatars that wasn't uh, i didn't find that out later that they the, their characters avatars rather they got switched up so uh but that's what made it enjoyable because it was for a fresh perspective this time around uh the grandfather got pulled into the game and also the grandfather's friend and it, it made it it made it great because now care uh i'm sorry now kevin hart and a rock character were played by old men which i think added to uh the comedy because they don't know you know old people they don't really know much about video games and it made it seem like this was based on a <laughs> made, it was based on a, a, a rpg experience so they don't know the ins and outs of, of, of video games and npcs and and things of that nature so it was very very anecdotal and, and just hearing the old man speech and how uh trying to talk and they they in this youthful body and, and they don't know why they got these powers and why they look like this but they're excited at the same time so it it, it made for for a hilarious experience they didn't even realize they're in a video game to like halfway in the movie too yeah yeah they they was they were they were lost uh, and all they they could go on was uh I mean, you had memories of, of, you know, what real life was like, but once they, the people talk and talk about memories or experience, they start to figure out who each other were. You know, the main character, you, didn't you say the actor was the um, same, he was a brother of the person who played Light in the Death Note reboot? Um, I, I really don't know. I, I don't, haven't seen that guy before, uh, honestly. They just um, look similar. They do look similar. But um, yeah, let's talk character conflicts. The um, protagonist, he was, uh, like I said, he was trying to go into the game so that he could, uh, he could feel what it was like to be strong, powerful, and uh, useful. And this was, um, this was for the most part because of his, uh, his girlfriend. His girlfriend, she wasn't anything too special either, but they both fell in love through the game. And I'd assume that they're gonna be together forever if they're like strangers caught in detention and you know they could survive a deadly video game together then they should be ride or dies forever Nothing so lasts forever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i could i could see why he was disappointed you know he was anxious to get him back to the game and feel that power but extremely logical poor decisions i'd say he was kind of I mean, dumb for that i he, mean it, it was it was his fault though i mean and them meeting uh, I, i'm so again i didn't i don't know what happened in the first movie but they built this bond and I guess they start dating off of what happened in the game and coming back to reality. Now they're in college and in, in different spaces. I mean, things are gonna be a bit different. Long but when, when you, what you find, yeah, that's true. In most most cases. But what happened is, 
his friends start reaching out for him and he started alienating himself. And even in the beginning, uh, in the beginning of the movie, when they showing his character as he's in college and it's, it's just showing that he having a, a string of bad luck. I mean, he's uh, his boss is yelling at him, you know, he's daydreaming and then he's getting rained on and then he's carrying his suitcase and the handle breaks. So it, this guy's just look, looking like he's really down on his luck yeah. and he's feeling like his friends are, you know, not there for him and they're not comfortable. Yeah, but then it, later on in the movie, it finds out that they have been contacting him. They have been calling him. He's been pushing them away, and it, it's kind of his own fault. I guess he's he was, socially awkward, you know? He's kind of yeah, a loser. Yeah, yeah, you, you can say that. He, he was. And, and so him going back into it, that's what they used as for an excuse for him to go back in the game. He wanted to feel that high. He wanted to feel that hard, that strong person, which is, is it was always in, in him on the inside the whole time. It's just... You, you know, you can't worry about the small stuff. You, you got to be you. And you so got to nurture, you know? The conflict was, was actually within itself. But I guess it made for a pretty understandable reason to go back in the game. Even though, from what I was told, this is the same thing he dealt with in the first movie. With being weak and timid and, oh my God, and I'm, I'm in a brat. And here we go. He doing, he's, uh, again, does that. Personally, I feel like after that, after he survived all that, he should have at least felt like there was a fire in his heart. I feel he could anybody, and I don't. I feel like there's no excuse to it unless you have a mental deformity or you lit, you physically can't do it. But I feel like anybody sh and everybody should dedicate themselves to physical fitness, weight training, cardio, calisthenics. Um, it, it doesn't matter. CrossFit that could add to your mental health. It could make you feel better. Um, yeah, it could shoot your confidence sky high. So I feel like with the with after all that happened. He should have at least found some way to show, to, to prove to the world, to prove to himself that I'm above this um this nerdy body I'm in. You know, I'm more than this. He was an extremely intelligent character, so you know it was kind of disappointing seeing him in that state of mind. I guess that's a good point. You don't you don't need to be this super super all star guy to be a hero. Anybody can be a hero. Not yeah. all wear capes. That's right. That's right. But basically, uh, you know, that's the gist of the movie. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll start from it. So basically, the kids are split up, like he said. Uh, the kids are split up, everybody's going their own direction. This kid finds an excuse to get back in the game. All his friends come find out he's in the game. They go to rescue him. One particular person, they accidentally drag the grandpa. You know, they're at the grandpa's house, his mom's house rather. Grab the grandfather and, uh, grandfather and his business partner into the game. Accidentally, one person is left out. However, she finds she finds a person uh, that was in the game for 20 years from the first movie. Those two go into the game to rescue everyone else, and so we got the whole team back again, plus the grandpa and his good and his friend. So you're back in the game, but they switch it up this time. Some of the areas they went to were different, and you know you got a little bit of desert, you got snow, and and some of the hijinks was just nuts and. Uh, you know, some laughs. I mean, the comedy I felt was great. Kevin Hart and The Rock, I, I think they feed very well off each other. And everything I saw, man, which, uh, again, I didn't see him in it. Uh, the first two, mind you, but they did have a scene in, in uh, Hobbs and Shaw, and I thought, and that movie sucked to me, but that scene when those two worked together, I thought oh, was just, yeah. was funny as heck. They're just two amazing actors and um, comedians, and, like, mm -hmm. you know, they just have great chemistry absolutely I, I, I personally i love both rock was my idol for a little bit kevin hart he's probably one of the funniest comedians you know in my opinion he's ranked up there so just them together you know and and then the whole physical attributes as well like how um kevin hart's a small guy kind of muscular i'd say i i could tell he lives for his career and then the rock he's really tall really muscular and them together just it, it just makes for a good combo it does you know I think one of the most conflicting and humorous moments and most satisfying moments altogether was um, when they had found out about the river with um, the special water that would switch okay. their characters around. I love that scene. Um, all of them, they, you know, like we previously stated, they were all in like avatars that were, they didn't meet their, um, their actual body type they didn't meet their who they actually played with before who they were accustomed to mm -hmm. so once they got to that river and they um conjoined they locked hands and switched characters it made for all the more satisfying it was so much better and it helped them amongst their journey as well so 
I felt the opposite. And, and I don't know if this because I didn't see the first movie. I mean, it didn't make them seem like, oh, here we are, we got the team back and everything else. But I felt it took away from the movie because I, I liked it that they they weren't in in their avatars that they were in oh, in the first movie. That and then that the the old the old, two old guys were one was Kevin Hart and one was uh, the Ross character. And, and I thought it, it it was so funny because you got these old guys who are like, oh, I don't know how to do this, I don't know how to do that, and and so they. Though they are these youthful characters, they don't understand. They still acting like they real life persona. So they like, oh, moving slow and, and stuff like that. And if you know Danny DeVito, he played, uh, he had the Rocks avatar. So we talking about this little old guy. And so now that he in this, this huge youthful body, I mean, he going nuts, getting in fights with everybody and just going insane. And I thought that was, that was the highlight of the movie when those, they were playing those guys. When they went back to their regular, when they uh, switched everything and everybody went back to their regular characters and I, they got Danny Glover playing, uh, his avatar was a horse. I'm like, how disrespectful is that? I'm like, get me a freaking break. And then you got now Danny DeVito is now in the, in the, the Asian girl. I was like, man, this is so disrespectful. That's what I personally felt. I didn't think it was funny. I, I liked it the way it was before. But they were able to get the mission accomplished because then the other characters can utilize the skills and the strength of their uh, their previous avatar. So it worked out for the best and they were able to complete the mission. But to me, the movie kind of went downhill at that point. By then it was, it was by the numbers and then that third act, I felt like it was just ridiculously predictable. It was like, you did, you, you had a whole formula and you was doing something fresh. But at that moment to me, it was like, it, 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 it went, everything went back to the way it was. It was predictable. We gonna do this, we gonna get the stone again. We gonna be the bad guy. We already know who gonna be the hero. We already know what's gonna happen. And it kinda, the stakes were kinda diminished to me. I'm not gonna hold you. Um, I have to completely agree on that. A lot of the comedy was themed around how, uh, the dysfunction of their characters. How exactly. They, how they just couldn't, they couldn't um, prosper, operate properly, you know, a lot of, it, it was a lot of just outright um, retard comedy, to be honest. Like how with uh, you said Danny DeVito's name was yeah, Danny DeVito, who was um, controlling The Rock. I, it was it was really funny. I was always getting to fights. It was um, I remember the scene where they're actually running from a flock of ostriches. He you know he was punching yeah. ostriches out the window and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, that you know, was funny. It was that yeah, it was it was hilarious. So uh, he was right about that. But at least at least in that part, it kind of made for a more satisfying appeal. But then again, a lot of the comedy was taken away. A lot of the um, element of surprise was taken away. Exactly, exactly. But other than that, I feel like it did make for a, a better ending in the movie. You know? I mean, but we can't. It's kind of a kids movie, so uh, yeah, yeah, we already knew true. there was gonna be happy endings, sunshine, mm -hmm. rainbows, all this stuff. You know, everything's gonna turn out good for the protagonist. And that, that was totally fine. I didn't have a problem with that. I mean, I guess going into the movie. You know, because honestly, I really didn't want to see it, but going with a group of my friends and family, you know, we, you know, we figured we would check it out. We enjoyed ourselves. And yeah, it, it was, oh, it was, it was fun. Yeah, this is my little dude. Uh, I didn't mean to touch you there. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I must admit, we, we had a blast. I absolutely, I mean, and it's, I didn't feel like this is one of those movies like, oh, you just drag it through it. Oh, I got to turn my Damn. brain off. This is retarded. But we knew it was a fun family movie. Tap. Yeah, really. <laughs> we knew it was a family fun movie, and that's exactly what I gave, what they gave us. I mean, it was beautiful. The shots were great. The cinematography was fantastic. The actors, I mean, you have professionals, uh, old school professionals with Danny DeVito and uh, uh, Danny Glover, and you had you know uh, younger professionals with The Rock and Kevin Hart, and then that I don't even know who who these younger people well, was. It was just some random. Yeah, <laughs> just some random. I don't know who that black. I'm sorry, and I, I, I gotta say this. That black dude had the worst lineup I've ever seen since Stephen A. Smith. I mean, that thing was a straight rainbow. I'm like, what the hell is that? I'm like, please. But anywho. <laughs> uh, I think that would do the review, yeah? Uh, I think so. Yeah, so I'll be generous. I'm gonna give it a three and a half max you know? Three out of, three and a half out of five. You are your father's son, because I was thinking three and a half myself, man. I, I was thinking about pushing it forward, but I'm like, in other movies, I've been very harsh. But I'm gonna give it a solid three and a half, man. It was it was funny. It was a fun ride. It was funny. Uh, I know The Rock has a huge fan base. I know Kevin Hart. And if y'all like either one of those guys, you would definitely enjoy them. Mm-hmm. Jumanji. Yeah. It just just and the way um Jumanji. 
I know one more thing before we go. I like how the uh, the actors, you know, Kevin R. He had to. He was good at playing multiple characters inside of his body. You know what? That's that's what we left out. That yeah, yeah. I, I like that too because he got to play uh, Danny Glover. So they both he got to play an old man and then he got to play uh, the youthful guy. And I, I thought that did stretch their range just a little bit, but I was impressed with that. Yeah. Good eye, Max. All right, well, um, that will conclude Max and Marvin. Some new reviews for you. Don't let your distractions hinder your actions. There you go. All right.